it's time to get to work on the textures for this air conditioner so there is the model and as you can see here I've got a number of UV tiles uh, out there so I'm going to select everything and go in and you will see let me turn that off for now and you will see the UVs all right so this is a lot of this was done with smart UV project and a little bit of it was done with uh, just normal UV unwrapping with seams and some of the the knob was done with just selecting it and UV unwrap so I've got a whole bunch of UV tiles and I've got my model and I am ready to take that into substance painter and just quickly in terms of UV unwrapping it what I will often do is select a bit unwrap that I'll say I'll try smart UV project and I'll bring it into substance painter and I'll see how well it uh, it bakes and takes textures and if it looks okay uh, and my textile density looks okay then I I'll just go ahead and uh, and and use that and you know maybe then I'll do the front and the back panel together and, and test that so it's it's a lot of testing and making sure that it's looking okay all right I'm going to export that as an FBX and bring it into substance painter I need to click new I'll switch this to OpenGL and UV tile workflow and select and let me see if I can find where I just saved that uh, air condition is right at the top export AC complete and OK all right there it is it hasn't been baked so we're going to do that but it looks like I got everything you can see by the way the UV tiles is one material you can switch that and call that AC or whatever and it'll just be one material that you would have to set up in blender for the whole thing all right so bake this will take a little while i'm going to set this at 20 uh, 48 uncheck id uh, i don't need anything else i don't need to change the ambient occlusion i'm just going to bake all right it's baked and now we have a look at it for any discoloration or lines or anything going through it but it looks okay to me so it's time to start all right i'm going to delete that default layer and i guess i will create a new fill layer and let's get rid of normal and let's get rid of height and let's just leave those for the color i'm going to drop it down a little bit and maybe we'll leave it up there and we drop the roughness and let's start with that and right click and add a filter and of course we're going to use this matte finish i'm going to scale the grunge up a little bit and decrease the intensity and that's going to be the sort of the, the look that i'm going to go for this hard plastic kind of almost metal looking with a bit of uh, grunge on it like that so that's our base layer I'm just gonna call this uh, white and I'm gonna color the knob in red so I'm going to uh, duplicate this layer I'll call this red and we'll change that to a red color I'm going to add a black mask and since I'm using an older version of Substance Painter this is the way that I need to select things so we'll have that in red like that all right the next thing is to make a metal and we're basically doing it off this so I'm going to duplicate that again I'm going to call this metal but I'll clear the mask and let's come in here and change this to a sort of a dark gray like that decrease the roughness a bit metallic all the way up okay and the things that I want to have in metal are going to, are going to be the bolts like 
that. I'm going to come in here and it's going to be... Uh, I'm not sure about those. We'll see. Probably, but... Okay, this style of this stuff. Uh, I don't want this, so I'm going to X that. Okay, so that's metallic there. I think I will do these bars here. So back to polygon fill. And this will take a little bit of time to get these. All right, and this thing. And this one. And I'm going to do this stuff here. And that thing underneath there is going to be black. Okay. I think I'm going to come back into the metal here. And just decrease the roughness a little bit. So it's not quite as, as shiny. Now, of course, we're going to have dirt in there. And that will uh, affect that. Let's um, go on. And uh, I'm going to take this one again. And I'm going to duplicate that. And this is going to be black. And I'm going to clear that mask. I'll try that. And I'm going to bring the roughness up a bit. Okay, back onto the mask with polygon fill. And just go in there and, and get that in black. Good. And I might try uh, just just maybe that in black. And we'll see if I want that in a different in gray or something like that. All right. So this is what we have uh, straightforwardly, if that makes sense. Let's add some alphas now to this. So I'm going to create a paint layer. And I'll do, um, I'll get rid of that. I'll do color and Height, I think make this dark drop the height down to about a third or so let's switch into orthographic snap it into front view and I'm gonna put some bolts here and there and alphas I'm gonna search for bolt I'm gonna use this one you could use any kind of bolt alpha that you might have and let's see a little bit bigger than this one and let's just try a, dropping a bolt there and there and here and here for the front and I got those two and I got those so that's probably enough let me just look at the back and the back already has those ones so I'm gonna do some more but uh, I don't need this um, okay so let's snap to the side now and um, create a smaller one actually I take it back let's look at the top first scale this down and let's see if I don't think symmetry is going to work for this knots off a little bit so I'm gonna put bolts in here just by eye it's kind of nice when they're a little bit off anyhow All right, so we'll have that. And now we'll come to the side. And I want some bolts inside here. So uh, I'm just going to zoom in for a second and get the size a bit smaller. And I want them spaced out. So I'm going to try on the spacing here something like 
600. Click, hold shift and control, and click down there. And it doesn't matter which one really has the more bolts, this side of, or the one closer to the front. Let's uh, try going down a little further and see if I can get that one more. No, I can't, so I'll just, I'll just put one in. And putting it here sort of across from that one. Okay, so we'll have those. And I'm just trying to decide if I want any more. Um, I don't I don't think I want them with the spacing. I'm just gonna bring that back to zero. I might increase the size and just do one or two more bolts sort of here and there. Yeah, okay, I do want that I do want that for the box. So I'm gonna go back to six hundred and uh, maybe I'll do it on the inside here. Let's see. And that's what I want. Sort of a few there. And a few there. Yeah, that's probably okay for the bolts. All right, so this is going to be alphas. And I'm probably going to do it all on the same layer. I don't think I'm going to have a problem. I'm going to put a logo there. I'll do something else here. So let's pull this back up. And I'm going to search for lines. And so this one comes with Substance Painter. And what I'm going to do here is uh, the lines quantity. I'm going to switch to one. That gives me, should give me three lines. And I'm going to shrink it down. Let me just see uh, what that looks like coming in. I don't think I'm going to do the black. So I'm going to get rid of that and just have the height. I'm just bring it up a little bit. And I, I'm thinking put something there and uh, it'd be nice to be able to see where I put that and there that's fine just to have another little something on there all right and I will go back to the black in a moment but I'm gonna bring in a logo uh, that I made I'll show you if I can find it again I'm going to bring it in as an alpha to the project. This is it right here. And I think I'll add my color back. Height, I don't need as much. I just want it indented a little bit. And I'll make it a bit bigger. I just created this in a graphics program. And I would just drop that right there. Okay, so let's go back to perspective. And this is what we have. And the textures are looking pretty good based on the UDIM method. So let's add some dirt and some scratches as our final stuff. I'm not going to do rust. I, I, I'm not going to do painting on this. So uh, we have this. And now I'm going to create a fill layer and color and roughness bring the roughness all the way up and the color i'm going to do in dark brown i'm going to add a black mask and a generator and the generator i'm going to choose is the dirt generator and you can see the dirt going in there i'm just going to scale this back now That'll darken this up nicely in the crevices and starts to make the edges uh, pop out a little bit more. And that's kind of the look I'm going for. And what I, what I need to do now is to get that 
into the bolts and into the various alphas. So the way I'm going to do that is, first of all, I'm going to label this as dirt. I'm just going to use one anchor point here on the alphas. So add an anchor point, it'll be called alphas, and on the dirt generator, I will open up micro details, micro height, I'll change that to true. And at the bottom here, micro height, I will choose the alphas layer, and the reference channel will be height. And that puts the dirt in the bolts and makes these alphas stand out a little bit more. It even goes into the text, which gets a little bit darker. All right. So that's a very simple texturing job, but to, in my mind, it looks sort of just like some of those sci-fi things that you would see. You know, you could make this really grungy and old, and uh, I do like that sometimes, but I, I don't really like that very much because it's sometimes just over the top. Uh, let's just add uh, anti-aliasing for this. And, of course, I can bring that up to 2K, and it's not even at 2K yet, and it's looking quite, quite good. Let me just pan the light around. Let's do that. So, one layer, okay? One texture set, so th this will affect everything. And there you have it. That is the finished model textured in Substance Painter. Very simply, I admit, uh, the only other thing we could do is we could add some scratches. But even as it is, it looks pretty nice, uh, even without the scratches. If you want to see it with scratches or how to do it, I think I would come back to 1024, and that'll take a minute to, to bring it back. Uh, I can do a few scratches on top of this. Just zoom in here. All right, uh, maybe on top of this dirt layer. Uh, for this one, I'm going to add a fill and a black mask. And for the fill, I will just use height. Drop it down a little bit so the scratches are indented. That may even be too much. Then I'll add a fill on the black mask. And on the grayscale here, I will search for scratches. I will drag this one on. It'll put the scratches on, and then we would have to adjust the balance. And you can adjust the other parameters as well. Contrast, tiling. So for example, if I come up here, I'll put color and I'll make it something like red so that you, I can see where the scratches are and quickly see if there's some one big splotch. That looks kind of interesting anyhow. That doesn't look too bad, so I'm just going to all click back on height. And, you know, without taking too much of your time, uh, I'm going to potentially leave it like that. So these are scratches. And then we'll up the resolution again. When I do that, sometimes the scratches become more apparent and you realize, you know, that is too much. And of course, you can edit in 2K. I mean, a lot of people have more powerful computers than I do. But my computer uh, becomes pretty slow. Yeah, to me, that's that's too much. So let's see if I can do any of this. Uh, I'm just going to knock the balance down almost, almost in half. And that's still probably too much. But I mean, it depends how close you're going to get. If you're not going to get too close, like, you know, something like, like, I don't know, like that, whatever, it's all right to have, to have a few. Uh, anyways, I think you get the idea. Um, like I say, it is a, it is a simple texturing job, but uh, this is what I envisioned I would want to do versus what I saw in the reference image and their texturing job. You certainly could uh, uh, go further with the materials. You could do roughness variations. You could do color variations. You could do uh, more edge, edge wear. Uh, you could do rust under the bolts. Well, all these things that I, I'm sure you know. Uh, but this is this is what I envision, envisioned as uh, the texture that I would do. All right, so thanks very much for watching this series. That was a lot of fun, and it's nice to see a final product at, uh, at last. And I'm looking forward to the next project. So take care.